Price is the greatest tool of misdirection. I don't think it's a coincidence that all the biggest banks in the world are hoarding silver. Even the US military just bombarded our silver stockpiles. Don't believe me? Well, I made a video covering that breaking news two days ago. I'm about to show you a clip from a Bloomberg interview that just got posted today as they ask HSBC's chief precious metals analyst, James Steele, whether or not gold is the best option. I wasn't too shocked when I heard his response. What was it? Not gold, but silver. Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. If you're new around here, welcome. I post daily silver-related videos involving anything that affects the price of silver as well, which is supply and demand, the fundamentals, the economy, even geopolitical tensions. So you get a good wraparound when you subscribe. Plus, I do lots of giveaways. An entry video is going on right now. Links in the description. May the luckiest stacker win. So I want to go over a price analysis, silver soars above $23 on Middle East rising tensions. And then I want to show you a clip from this Bloomberg interview, like I mentioned in the introduction. Silver soars above $23 on Middle East rising tensions. Silver price jumps from $22.70 to $23.07, testing crucial resistance at the 200 daily moving average of $23.26. With that said, real quick, I do want to show silver's price. This is the daily chart. You see a huge jump, and that's what they're talking about, $23.13. If you pop back a little bit let's let's go to like the weekly chart you can see it started to go downhill but it looks like there is a lot of stability there so a breach of the 200 daily moving average could expose next resistance levels at $23.69 and Bollinger bands top at $23.80 if silver falls below $23 supports our $20.94 and $20.44 and 20 day EMA at $20.25. So if it breaks below 23, there is still a lot of support. Regardless, the day to day prices don't matter too much unless you're a day trader, which I highly recommend you don't do. Just buy the physical and hold it. That's all you got to do. Don't make it more complicated than it has to be. Silver price jumped above the $23 figure, which bolstered by a risk off impulse amidst geopolitical headlines suggesting the Middle East conflict is escalating as Israel began its ground offensive at the Gaza Strip. That said, silver rose from $22.70 to $23.07, gaining more than 1.35% on the day. Silver remains downward biased despite rising above the 50-day moving average, and that's at $22.94, about to test the crucial resistance level at the 200 daily moving average at $23.26. Once that level is cruised, the next ceiling level would be $23.69, the latest cycle high. In a breach of that level, silver bias would shift to neutral upwards, exposing the top of the Bollinger Bands at $23.80. I'm not going to go too much into the resistance levels and the support levels. You know, that, that is, a, that's, that is a, an idea of what's happening with silver. The whole point of this video is this interview, though. So with that said, I'm about to show this clip. I cut it. It's six minutes and 30 seconds, but I chopped it to the point that is very important, the meat and potatoes. So Let's jump into this. Our question of the day is about whether or not industrial should be in your portfolio. Let's extend that into the precious metal space. Should I be not looking at gold, but looking at those precious metals that have an industrial capability? Is that a better place to look? Should I be buying silver over gold? Should I be buying platinum, palladium? Where else within the complex should I be looking? Do I get a better return from there than I do with straight up and down gold? Well, we're more positive on silver, platinum and palladium than we are for gold. Um, we're looking for higher prices in all three. Uh, in the case of silver, it has enormous uh, applications environmentally. Yep. Twice as much silver in a BEV than there is in a standard ICE automobile, for instance. 
battery uh, electric vehicle versus uh, it, versus yeah. an internal it, combustion yeah, engine, gas engine. Mm -hmm. and and also uh, the 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 amount that's going into solar power PV demand yep. very strong. Almost everything in a hospital that you go into now is coated in a thin layer of silver that you can't really? see, antibacterial. Yeah. Um, even flak jackets are sewn in silver, um, and 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 as far as platinum and palladium go, even though we think plat palladium is headed into a small uh, surplus next year. It's probably undervalued, even considering substitution with platinum. But platinum is gaining on palladium in automobiles, and there's also got wide, wide, wide usage environmentally as well. Is so there, that looks positive to me. Is there enough uh, supply of silver as it's clearly been so expanded? Yes, there's a great deal above ground. Okay. Uh, and it can be recycled, but it takes time. And silver doesn't come onto the market in, in recycling nearly as quickly as higher gold prices bring gold onto the market. Sure. So it's got to get above $25 to really increase uh, the, the, the rhythm of recycling that we're, that we're already seeing. What impact does the dollar have from this point on? I, we've, seen a, we've seen a strong dollar. It, it kind of comes back to the yield story. But yes. you, you mentioned it right at the beginning. You talk about the headwinds. Just talk me through kind of how big a headwind the dollar is. Well, the dollar, uh, the inverse relationship between dollar and gold is about the, 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 the steadiest relationship you'll get going yep. right back to the end of Bretton Woods. And when it breaks down, by the way, um, both the dollar and the gold tend to go higher. And that's a never good. That's never good because it means everybody's looking for a safe haven asset yeah. at the same time. We saw it uh, during, uh, for a while at Ukraine. We saw it during the COVID. We saw it during the global financial crisis. Mm -hmm. I mean, our view is that dollar is going to remain firm, strong, right up to the end of 2024, which is why we think there's going to be weight on the gold price as the geopolitical thermometer maybe begins to come down a little bit. So as you heard, he says that silver is the better option. There was a couple interesting things that I do want to highlight and point out that he said, but I do want to first start with him saying that silver is the better option. Of course it is. He asks, well, the interviewer asks, you know, would investing into industrial metals be a better option than something like gold? Silver is the best of both worlds. It's a monetary metal and an industrial metal where gold is just a monetary metal. So moving forwards, the fundamentals of industrial uh, assets like silver would be more influential on supply and demand, in my humble opinion, more so than moving forward with a collapsing dollar. Because yes, that would push gold and silver higher, but silver has this entirely different reason why it can go higher. Silver is the best of both worlds. And I think that's kind of what he was saying. But let me go to my second point. When she says, is there enough above ground silver? And he says, there is. I don't, and then he goes into recycling, which is an even bigger problem because I don't think we have enough silver. I mean, that that's obvious, right? The data has shown that. There's a reason why military is raiding U.S. stockpiles. There's a reason why he said silver is used in everything. It has antimicrobial properties. That's why it's used in the medical world, even colloidal silver. He talks about EVs a little bit. You know, moving forwards, if you really look at the data, if you really look at trying to go green, how much silver we need and how much is dug up out of the earth's crust and how much, uh, you know, how much is floating around and nobody's really selling it. They're not returning this silver to the COMEX. There's a problem here. And my third point is when he talks about gold moving up with the dollar. That is interesting. We've seen it a couple times since gold and silver are negatively correlated to the dollar index. When gold goes higher, the dollar goes, is going lower, vice versa. But we do see these times when they're both moving together, which is very odd. Well, on that note, I do see a day and age where silver takes on a life of its own, regardless of what gold is doing, regardless of what stock market volatility is doing, regardless of what the dollar even somewhat is doing, because silver has uses far beyond these. And like I said earlier, the fundamentals, everything in, is pushing and pulling uh, silver and gold in, in different percentages. But what the what is the main 
influence of price is the fundamentals once we get rid of like manipulation and price rigging, you know. But at the end of the day, nothing makes as much sense as silver. So what do you guys think about this? I've been seeing more and more and more people come out and say silver is the best option. I remember covering Hecla Mining, the CEO of Hecla Mining last week. He says silver is by far the best option. Banks are saying it. Everyone is saying it. Why do you think billionaires are buying silver? It wasn't just that $50 million order from that billionaire that lives in Texas that bought from Miles Franklin, by the way, which if you guys want to purchase from them, send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Letting know Slayer sent you. Had to throw that in there. Shout out to Andy Sheckman. Uh, but it's not just that person. We're talking about Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Jim Rogers. We're talking about the wealthiest people, the most successful investors, businessmen in the world. Silver, not gold. We're talking about silver. So, um, so yeah, I definitely think this was something interesting to highlight from Bloomberg. Um, and I'm glad that this guy spoke his opinion. There was a couple of things I'm a little iffy about. Recycling, I don't think would even put a dent in how much silver we need. Remember, we had record-breaking supply deficits this year. It's interesting that he didn't mention that, right? We're talking about record-breaking supply deficits. We've never been this short on silver. Hundreds of millions of ounces in the red, and that's only going to get worse as times go on as we advance in this new digital technological era. It's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse at a faster pace. And then when you see that happen, when the price goes up, since there is a direct correlation between silver demand and price, then you're going to see everyone starting to jump on board. And then when that happens, all the big tech industry is going to jump on board since they need a direct source. So they're going to have to be paying premiums, which is going to raise their cost of production and then in return, raise consumer prices. You see how everything's connected and nowadays everyone is starting to realize it. That's why Elon Musk bought a silver mine. That's why you're seeing these companies start to recycle silver or learn how to recycle in different ways. Or um, I think I remember covering an article like Perth Mint is even starting to scrap cell phones and, and laptops and stuff to, uh, to, you know, to help their, their production or their supply uh, or their demand. It, it's insane, right? Everything is, is starting to come together as someone like myself or Andy Sheckman or David Morgan have been saying for years and years is that we don't have enough silver to go green. And if you think we do, you're living in la-la land. So yeah, anyways, um, make sure you subscribe, folks. Every single day, I post videos. Every day. I'd never miss a day. Every single day. You'll always be kept in the loop. Always giving you the inside scoop. You, you better subscribe, not for my sake, for your own. You cannot be blindfully investing. You can't just not know what's going on, right? And, I, and like I said earlier, I'm not just giving you guys silver news. I'm giving you guys all the news because all the news is related to silver. I don't care if you're left, right, upside down, front, center, in the middle, sideways. I don't care your political views. I have to cover it, though, because those because uh, this, you know, this news affects the price of silver. So I have to talk about this news, right? I have to talk about the Middle East rising tensions because this is pushing silver upwards, right? We have the 2024 election coming up. We have a lot of big things coming up. This war is escalating. You guys have to stay up to date with this. You can't be left in the dark. So make sure you subscribe. I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers. I'm also doing lots of giveaways. So those are, you know, you shouldn't subscribe just for the giveaway. You should be subscribing because I post daily videos. So yeah, anyways, if you guys wanted to purchase silver, we have some silver, gold, and platinum deals. Check out Miles Franklin. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. Andy would love to hear it. Andy Sheckman and I have a weekly podcast. He's in Minnesota right now. So it's kind of hard to, you know, to get together with him, but hopefully we'll be able to in the next day or so. So yeah, anyways, thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.